Now that we have the definition of voltage under our belt and we understand what's going on, let's attach our first law to voltage and that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law is simply an electrical restatement of conservation of energy. So before we do Kirchhoff's voltage law, we need a couple of definitions to make sure we all are using our words in the same way. And so the first word we're going to define is uh, a path. A path is just like if you go hiking. If you go hiking, you follow a path. What is a path? It's a progression from a point A to another point B. So if you go hiking uh, from your home to a neighbor's, uh, to, to a friend's house, then you, have, you follow some path down some sidewalks, through the trees, over hills. Uh, the path is a progression from your house to your friend's house, a progression from point A to B. Now, uh, often when we go hiking, we actually hike along a closed path. A closed path is a path, a progression from one point to another. But a closed path is a path where the starting and the ending points are the same. That is, point A and B are the same location. So typically, if you go hiking, for instance, you'll drive your car to the trailhead, you'll park, You'll go for a hike. You hike through the woods and through the streams and up and over the hills. And then eventually you will come back to where you started from. That is, you hiked a closed path. The starting and ending point to the same. You hike back to where you started from because you want to get to your car, which is parked at the trailhead. All right. So now, when we're talking about voltage, remember voltages are energies. And so we are progressing around, taking a progression from one energy point, A, to a different energy point, B. And so as you go up and down in energies, and you go from one energy point, A, to another energy point, B, you are going up and down in voltage, up and down in energies. And, and the path you take from A to B uh, simply uh, is accounting for the change in energy levels. So a closed path is where you go up and down in energies and you end up where you start from. So this leads us to the definition of uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of the voltages around a closed path must be equal to zero. Now the voltages, of course, are, are, elevate, are changes in energy levels as you go from one point to another. And you're going to add up all these energy level changes and you're going to add them up until you get back to the same energy level that you started from. And Kirchhoff's voltage law says that equals zero. So before we uh, do an example, let's go back and look at our analogy again, and that is the terrestrial elevation version of KVL. If we were to write KVL in terms of terrestrial elevations, we would have that the sum of the elevation changes around a closed path equals zero. So let's do an example of that. So we're going to start our example here in Anytown. So we're in Anytown, USA. And we're at a particular energy level. And what is that energy level? It is 50 meters above sea level. And we're going to leave energy any town, and we're going to hike to Death Valley. Now, what is our change in elevation from any town to Death Valley? Well, we went up. We went up a negative 100 and 36 meters. To go from any town to Death Valley, we went up a negative 136 meters. Now we're going to leave Death Valley and we're going to hike to Nashville. So from Death Valley to Nashville, we actually will go up in energy 286 meters. We'll leave Death Valley and, we'll, excuse me, we'll leave Nashville and go to Miami. And in doing so, we went up a negative 200 meters. And then we'll leave Miami and hike back to any town. And to do that, we had to go up 50 meters. So in this case, we are adding up all of the elevation rises. We rise up a negative 136 going to Death Valley. We rise up 286 from Death Valley to Nashville. We rise up a negative 200 from Nashville to Miami, and we raise the elevation 50 meters from Miami back to any town. If we add up all the elevation changes, you will see that the net, the, the total the sum of all the elevation rises must be zero. This is not really surprising if you stop and think about it. If you start 
your hike at any town and then you progress to Death Valley and then you go to Nashville and then you go to Miami and then you end up back at any town where you started from, you are obviously going to end up at the elevation that you began at. Therefore, the net change in elevation over these hikes had better be zero. If you end up at the same elevation you started from, the net change in elevation had better be zero. All right, so let's progress to the electrical version. So the electrical version of KVL says the sum of the voltages around a closed path equals zero. So let's do the same thing. Here we have a voltage. Again, a quick reminder, we have some voltages. What does this mean to be 50 volts? Well, that means that this voltage is 50 volts higher than some reference where Miami and the reference happen to have the same value. So remember, this could be something like ground. All right. So we have a voltage which is 50 volts any town with respect to ground, which is also Miami. This is a voltage voltage which is 200 volts above our reference and here we have a voltage which is negative 86 above our reference or that is it's 86 volts below the reference. So let's do an example. Let's take an, a charged particle. Our charged particle is going to start at the energy level of any town. If the charged particle is then moved to the energy level at Death Valley, what is its increase in energy? Well, the increase in energy is a negative 136 volts. Then that charged particle is raised in energy to this uh, point, the level, energy level at Nashville, and what is the increase in energy? Well, it's 286 volts. And then the charged particle will have energy taken away from it, and it's taken to the level of Miami, which means we took away, or actually we added a negative 200 volts of energy, and then the charged particle is brought back to the energy level at any town, all right, and to get to that point, we have to add back from Miami up to any town 50 volts again. Well, since our particle is now located at the same energy level that it started from, the net change in energy has got to be zero. All right, and we see that that is indeed the case, that if we add up all the increases in all the voltage levels, we get back to this, we get a net increase in energy of zero. If you are at the same energy level you started from, the net change in energy must be zero. That's conservation of energy. If, if, case, if KVL here is not, if this law is not satisfied, then you have either created or destroyed energy. And you can't do that because of conservation of energy. So that's what KVL is. So now let's do an example, show an example of how we can actually put KVL into use in everyday situations. So here I have a recipe of Kirchhoff's voltage law and this is the way I always do KVL and it's important you always do things the same way every time so that you don't make mistakes. As we go forward in electrical circuits these expressions and formulas are going to get much more complicated so we don't want to be worried about how to actually write down a KVL equation which is true. So here's the recipe that I use for writing KVL and this is the way I always do it. And I encourage you to do the same thing. So number one in KVL, I'm going to start in the lower left-hand corner, the lower left-hand corner of my circuit. So that's where I'm going to start, and I'm going to progress around the circuit in a clockwise fashion. Now as you go around in a clockwise fashion at each circuit element, you're going to do uh, these two small steps. You're going to write down the polarity symbol that you come across first. So in this particular example, I'm going to go around clockwise. I'm going around my circuit in a clockwise fashion. And the first circuit element I come to is this 10 volt voltage source. And in the 10 volt voltage source, what is the polarity marking that I hit first? Well, the polarity marking I'm hitting first is the plus sign. So I will write down plus, and then you write down whatever the voltage is between the polarity markings. In this case, I have 10 volts. Go to the next circuit element. What polarity marking do I hit first? Well, it's a minus sign. And then you write down whatever is in the, is the voltage between the polarity markings. Well, we have a minus from the polarity marking, and then it's minus 3 volts is the value of the voltage between the polarity markings. Continuing on, the next polarity marking we get to is a minus sign. And then what is inside? Well, it's a positive 2 volts. And then continuing on, the next marking I get to is a plus sign. And what is in contained between the polarity markings? It's V1. 
At that point, I've continued around until I have reached the starting point again. And so I know that KVL says the sum of these voltages around a closed path must be equal to zero. So if we want to solve for V1, which is a voltage we don't know, we can simply rearrange this equation and we have 10 minus a minus 3, all right, which is plus 3, it's 13, minus 2, which is a plus 11, carried to the other side. We see that V1 is a minus 11 volts. V1 is minus 11 volts. So KVL I always do the same, do the same way every time. I always begin in the lower left part of the circuit. I go around the circuit clockwise. As you get to each circuit element, write down the polarity marking you hit first, then write down the actual voltage between those polarity markings. Keep doing this over and over and over again until you get to the starting point. And when you do, that must equal zero KVL. So we have this circuit. We found the answer V1 is a minus 11 volts. Let's do one more example. This next example is actually the exact same problem except for some of the voltages have been reversed. This voltage on the left has been flipped over and the voltage here has been flipped over compared to the previous one and then we're looking for V2 which is the opposite which is the voltage which is also has the polarity markings reversed if you go back and compare to the previous example. So let's work this one real quick. KVL so start in the bottom left corner go clockwise what polarity marking we hit first? Minus. It's a minus minus 10. Next polarity marking we come to is a plus sign. It's a plus 3 volts. The next polarity marking is a minus and then it's 2 volts minus V2 equals 0. So evaluating this and solving for V2 well we have minus a minus 10 is a plus 10 plus 13 that is 11. So V1 ends up being 11 volts. And if you look at, take this problem and look at it, we see, you know, V1 is the voltage plus to minus with the plus on the left. Go back and look at the previous page and we see that V1 is the same voltage with the plus on the right hand side. In the first example we have V1 is minus 11 volts we worked it this time we see V2 is a positive 11 volts. Those, that's the same voltage. The difference between V1 and V2 is simply the polarity markings and we see that the number is the, exactly the same. The only difference being the sign, the SIGN of the voltage. Same voltage, V2 and V1 really are the same answer. It's just the two different names for the same voltage. So the example of how to compute KVL, here's the recipe for computing KVL. Do it the same way every time so that you're not questioning the recipe of writing the KVL equations because as we go forward you'll see that these terms will get much, much more complicated.